Hello everyone and welcome to YWAM Harpenden Live Series Interview. These are ongoing Live Series teachings that we have here at YWAM Harpenden. My name is Sion and I'm from Canada. I am Giovanni and I am from Brazil. If you have not watched this, you can find the teachings and the interviews on our Facebook page and YouTube and podcast. Today we have the lovely Yuan Alexanderson with us talking about discipleship. Oh, I am so excited to have him with us. Yuan, <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here yeah, with it's us. Great to be here. Yes. Before we get into the questions mm -hmm. and we tackle discipleship, can you just tell us a bit about yourself, um, your passion, and when you came into YWAM, mm -hmm. so the viewers can know you a bit? Yes. Um, so I started YWAM. I did my DTS in 2007, and I went on outreach to Northern India. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I joined staff uh, the year right after in 2008, and I've been on staff ever since. So I think that's coming up about, what is that, 12 years. Uh, I am married to Krista. Uh, she's from Canada. Yeah. And we have three kids. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and we have three kids together, uh, Kyla, Maya, and uh, little Jacob. My passion is uh, discipleship, seeing people grow and understanding uh, the world of God and how we are to relate as Christians in this world mm -hmm. and to to do that in a way that it has long lasting impact on the people and on the environment around them. Um, and for for many years, I've been in different leadership positions uh, in YWAM2, uh, which have been very informative and helpful. That is awesome. Yes. By the way, your kids are beautiful. Yes. Just putting it out there. I concur. They're <laughs> quite amazing. <laughs> Yuan, it's good mm -hmm. to get to know a little bit more mm -hmm. of you and let's get into the topic of yes. discipleship. Yes. Let's do it. And let's start simple but mm -hmm. deep All right. at the same time. <laughs> Is that possible? That's good. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> so if you could describe to us discipleship without mm. using the word discipleship, mm. what would you, how would you describe it? Do I, am I only allowed to use one word, or can I use several words to describe this? <laughs> However, right. it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> if I would describe it in one word, because the definition of the word disciple, which is from, I think, Greek, it means learner. Yeah. Um, but other words that I would use to describe discipleship is uh, connectedness, to be connected to God, yourself, and others. Uh, intimacy, to, to live vulnerably, uh, to be humble, to be surrendered to Jesus fully. Amen. There are many things that I, I would use to describe discipleship, but I think that if I would sum it down to one thing, is to be a lifelong learner. Wow. Yeah. So, some of, like, for my everyday life, mm -hmm. um, trying to be, to bring Jesus um, into my everyday life. Mm -hmm. So, for somebody who has walked this journey for so long and you <laughs> teach on it, yeah. <laughs> Please help me. How can you bring Jesus' model of discipleship into your everyday life? What does that look like? Yeah. Um, in, in one way, I would say it's nothing that you bring into your life. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nothing that you add on to what you're doing, but it's rather something that should be, should be a, a overflow of your intimacy with Jesus. So I believe in, in the most simplest of ways, if you want to live like Jesus, uh, you need to relate yeah. like mm -hmm. Jesus, because that's what I think is, is the core of all discipleship is relationship. And yeah. it starts with our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, and the, it needs to start there. And for me, like I, I lived, I've been Christian my whole life. So I'm, I'm grown up in a, a Pentecostal church in a, in a small society where right. everyone was Christian more or less. Uh, and having that knowledge my whole life, but n not fully embracing the fullness and the intimacy that lies within knowing God personally. But then right. when I did my discipleship training school, that's when I was introduced like to hearing God's voice mm. and understanding God's desire to be, mm. to want me to activate him in my life. Because I believe that God is always active right. in our lives. So no matter if you're Christian or non-Christian, no matter if you acknowledge it or not, God is, is living and active in your life. And, and what we're doing is that we're just pursuing an awareness of, of his presence with right. us. Right. Um, so uh, how do you do it? Like it's, it, it starts with just a, a desire to just know God personally and understanding what that concept looks like. Is there like practically things you can do? Like 
Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, there is. It's, it's just how, yeah. do you, how do you do that in, in 30 minutes? That is true. <laughs> but um, so the most foundational thing for me was was to pursue the understanding of hearing God's voice. Right. So uh, in, in, a, in the discipleship training school, learning to hear God's voice was probably the most foundational thing because that's right. where my life stems from every day. Whether I'm having a, a extended quiet time or devotional time where I read my Bible or read a book and then have a time of intercession to just living my life, sitting in da daily conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you can do that by, there are books on that. There's a book by Dallas Willard about hearing God's voice. It's a really good book and Dallas Willard is a really good author. Mm -hmm. And we have in, in in YWAM we have Lauren Cunningham's book. Is that really you, God? It's it's an it's inspiration. Book. Yeah, it's an and that that book I would say is more that inspirational book with great stories. Whereas Dallas Willard book maybe goes more in depth of how to hear God's voice. Wow. Um, but you cannot separate your pursuit of intimacy with God from the pursuit of getting to know yourself and making yourself known to others. Right. Because that was also one of the foundational things, and if you want a practical thing, is that you need, a, you need someone that's walked further than you yeah. if you okay. want to grow in your intimacy with God and, and living like a disciple. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing, like that's what Jesus did when he started his ministry, he made sure he had people around him. Okay. He, like, he didn't just walk as a guru around the world on his own and just like, he, he created uh, a community around him. Hmm. Great. So good. Nice. Um, it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's, great. It's, it's, there. <laughs> it's great. And um, just like in your journey, just uh, a personal question. Mm -hmm. What makes you want to disciple? And what's the outcome that comes out of it? To disciple other people? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's a great question. I thought about it a bit beforehand. What is it that makes me want to disciple? I think in the broader sense, uh, because I love God, he and I love God genuinely, yeah. he puts a desire in me to love people genuinely. And I think discipleship or to disciple someone becomes a very technical term. But in the end, is is to help someone learn the ways of Jesus. And I think for any Christian, it should be a, just a, a core longing to right. wanting others to discover Christ more. Mm -hmm. And you can call that evangelism or teaching someone or but I think it's just it's just this it comes from inside of wanting to have grown with God I want to share right. it with others and also just the very fact like when I did my discipleship training school that was a turning point in my life I was heading in a very poor direction mm -hmm. and and stepping into DTS and being encountered with people that love God in a way that I've never seen before and in a tangible way that I've yeah. never seen before and how that impacted me that also just has motivated me wanting to see That's others uh, grow too. But in the end, the motivation needs to again come from this intimacy with Christ because when our will is not enough mm -hmm. and when we come to the end of ourselves, which we do regularly, you just need that, that bottom intimacy with Jesus that motivates you. Um, so for me, I staffed my first DTS in January mm -hmm. and you know, it's it so life-giving, but also, you know, discipleship is no joke. It comes mm -hmm. with a lot of up and downs, right. and, you know. So for you, practically, mm -hmm. what is the hardest thing about discipleship? Yeah, in relation to how I disciple others, others. or being a disciple? Both, both. <laughs> both, all right. <laughs> um, if you uh, it, it, I mean, discipling others, it doesn't have to be hard. Right. But I would say you're probably not investing enough. Mm -hmm. Because true discipleship can only happen, like the depth of the effect, I don't know efficiency, if that's the right word in this context, but the depth of your efficiency is related to the depth of relationship you have with someone. Right. Because to learn, like you need to be known and to make yourself known to someone. So yeah. it's always that deep risk when you invest yourself into someone else's life that they can hurt you. Right. Uh, or even worse, like, they, you know, like you, you give your advice and they listen and they follow and they grow and they don't grow because they necessarily listen to your advice they grow because what you're saying is biblical mm -hmm. uh, but then they choose wrong later on and they worst case fall away from God or they yeah. just grow into a state in the relationship with God where they just don't grow anymore and that's that's painful yeah. and that would be the absolute hardest but I think that's the, that's why it's so beautiful and valuable like yeah. it, it needs to have that cost in our lives that that risk of breaking relationship right um, but the, the single hardest thing that makes it impossible to disciple someone is if they don't want to grow. Right. They don't, they don't want to listen to God. So then, then what do you do? Like, 
if you're being intentional, discipling yeah. Yeah. someone, but you know they're not giving or they're not trying. Like, where do you? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, how do you, yeah, would yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a good question. How would you go about that? Uh, the first thing I would never do is to force someone. Right. You can never force growth. Growth is an inner motivation. It comes from within. It comes from revelation. And I think yeah. usually as people in our need for control and in our need of, no, this can't fail, mm -hmm. we, we exert ourselves or we, we push too hard. And that's never helpful. It, it needs to be motivated from within. So the only thing you can do if someone is has shut off, and it's difficult because there's nuances in that, but yeah. you just need to love them well and love them back to that motivation, demonstrate yeah. practically the love of God that they're maybe lacking, wanting to open up. Kind of like creating like a safe place for them yeah. and being available. Yeah, and that's the absolute best thing. If you're a safe person, people yeah. will be safe with you and they'll, they'll open up. For but sure. You, you need to do that. You, you need to find a way to motivate them. And in the worst case scenario, and that happens, and I've seen that when people just say, no, I don't want it anymore. The only thing you have left to do is to pray. To pray, mm -hmm. yeah. You pray throughout, but you know, Sometimes. Really pray. <laughs> yeah, but it's, sometimes that's the only thing we can do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ask any parent, and, and ask their the kids don't, doesn't want. And yeah, the when the kids doesn't want to cho choose Jesus, what do you do? Like you, you pray. Just pray, like crazy. And let the Holy Spirit do the rest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Yeah, that's awesome. good. And what significant moments you had on your journey with discipleship? Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> I love that. Um, I would, the first thing I would say is, is the revelation of that there are no significant moments. Mm, wow. There are. I'll, I'll, I was I'll, like, I'll oh. No, but I, I think the revelation of like significant moments usually has a buildup. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we are, we are in constant shaping of becoming who we are. You are shaped by your friends. You're shaped by your family. You're shaped how you act at work. You're shaped how, who you are in school. Like we make decisions every day that, yeah. that takes us in a trajectory towards something. So in, in, in one sense, I think it will be too easy to say just one moment transforms us, mm -hmm. even though I have several, but it's both at the same time. And you'll find that in the Bible all the time. Yeah. There's always both and. But I do have significant moments. Uh, uh, being born was a significant moment because I was born into a Christian family and, and that has shaped me and been a huge blessing for me tremendously. Uh, when I, f on my own, when I was 14, I said yes to Jesus and uh, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit uh, and God met me in a very tangible, close way where I, I felt it in my, in my whole body. That's wow. what's significant. And then throughout my teenage years, I, I went to a, a Christian conference each summer and it's called Nyhem. Uh, it's, it's a, yeah. Is there a translation? <laughs> no, New Home is literal translation, oh. but it's, it's, a, it's a campground. It's a Christian camp. Uh, and conference that runs for a week each summer. But in there also, I had some uh, significant encounters with the Holy Spirit that has shaped me. Um, and it, doing my DTS was a turning point in my life. That was not just one moment, but that was like a, a set period of time of six months that gave me opportunity to, to turn everything around. Wow. Uh, and, and another like significant moment was I, I had struggled with habitual sin for many, many years. Like I, I, I suffered from an addiction that had been with me since I was a child. And in a, in a time of repentance or sharing our shame and the things we struggle with, yeah. I shared everything that I'd done to a, to a safe group of people that listened well. They prayed for me. And from that moment on, I never struggled with that sin again. Wow. And, and that just set me up because that had been the sin or the thing that always pulled me away from God. And that's what sin is. It's yeah. the thing that pulls us away from Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that had always pulled me away. But in that moment, I just got yeah. free from it. And it set me on a tra trajectory where I could just walk in freedom. So did you feel like you said that you, you were with a group of people mm -hmm. that you've mm -hmm. told them about your addiction. Mm -hmm. So for you to get to that place, you felt safe with these people. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's like for myself, I think <laughs> that's an area where, you know, I have to feel safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and to be able to open up. And then that's the beginning of me yeah. healing. Yeah, that's right. So that's it's being vulnerable. vulnerable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, that's, a, that's a tricky thing because it, it goes both ways. Like I don't, yeah. I don't believe in this, that 
trust is just earned. Right. I think there's half truth, like all these amazing things we put on Facebook and on our Instagram f- posts with a nice photo, like we do these quotes, mm. uh, but usually they're usually half true. Mm. And you also need to risk it to, yeah. to gain something. And there's also the maturity of the people that are there and yeah. the environment that's created by the people that are leading that context too. Right. I remember you, you're the one that told me trust is not always just given, it's, no. I mean, taken. Yeah. Yeah. Or what is it? <laughs> trust. Trust is not always something that <laughs> you, you that is earned. Earned. Yeah. yeah. You also have to give. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you, for me, mm-hmm. are a king of being fully present. <laughs> <laughs> you've, I have talked to you so many times, and you've talked about this being fully present. Yeah. How did that come about, and how did you translate that into your everyday walk with Jesus? Yeah. Because that is what I'm still working on. That's great. So I would love to hear your input. <laughs> so I'm going to do a disclaimer here because this is something that I did in my when I did my master's in spiritual formation and discipleship. So my, my school leader doesn't come and hunt me down and say I misquoted anything. So this is the, the interpretation that I've that I discovered what it is um, and what it looks like and how I understand it. So right. that's good. Uh, being fully present is about knowing God fully so you can know yourself fully and know others fully. It's about um, more than just a mindful awareness, but like awareness within your spirit or when you know that you know that God is always with you. Uh, Being fully present is to be be comfortable with your whole range of emotional life. Like I I don't hide when I feel sad or hurt or ashamed, but I, I rather I seek that out. So there are times in, in my leadership or in just everyday life where I feel insecure or hurt or unsure. And instead of trying to push that away or, or seek out false joy or watch Netflix to to avoid, to avoid the, I, I sit in it and like, okay, God, I recognize that I'm feeling stressed. I even, I cannot even put a name on it. I just know it's an uncomfortable feeling yeah. and allowing God to speak to me about what that is and allowing him to minister to me, minister to me, uh, and there might be an action that I need to go and ask for forgiveness or talk to someone. Yeah. Because usually our, our problems is relational, either with ourselves, others, or God. Um, or that I, it's just a feeling. Yeah. And that happens too. I just feel insecure and goes like, no, it's just, it's not true. And then I submit that to God. So, and it also has to do with other people. Like I'm uh, working on being fully present with someone. I, I talk to someone. I look at them. I... I, I train myself to be a good listener, yeah. so I don't just hear people, that, but that I, I seek out truth in, in what people are saying. And you're good at that. Uh, that's good. Yeah, Thank very you. good at listening. Yes, that's a lot of practice. Yeah. Um, that's the same with God. Like, I don't just take something that's given to me, but I, but I wrestle with something. And I, yeah. I think about how does this apply to me? How does this affect my life? So sure. I think being fully present is, is a, very, it's a very big thing, but in the end, it's just about like full awareness uh, of God and what his world looks like. And that was a journey for you to get. Yes. So that started for me. So I did this master's program and it, the the phrasing, that word was used there. I mean, I've been on that journey and we are, we should all be on that journey of becoming fully present. It's just the framework was given to me in in this master's program. So I could, because they're so important with framing that we can frame things and set put words on things in our lives. Because otherwise it's usually just a, a kind of a thing. When you get the words, it's easier to make it land, not just in your mind, but something that can go deep wow. uh, within you. Awesome. Yes. That's good. Boom. It is good. It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's really good. That's great. So good. So we mentioned about being fully present, mm-hmm. but as well, how can also we change our mindset on being uh, intentional? Being intentional. That's good. Uh, the, the the boring answer, but the true answer is again, like it comes from the intimacy you have with Jesus. Mm. Because if you draw yourself to God, you will know what truth is. Yeah. And that will cause you to go in, to cause you to, to act. And that's what grace is. Like grace is not just a nice feeling that comes over us, yeah. but grace is an enabling force mm. that that's given to us through the grace of Jesus Christ. And, and I think as, as you genuinely seek out God f- not for our own gain, but for the gain of just get to know him, mm. that will strengthen you being intentional. Yeah. Um, and, but it's also combined with just 
it's willpower. It's about understanding. And I guess it's humility. Like, I just don't know things. Yeah. I don't know people. Like, I don't know God. I don't know myself. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's to, to seek things out uh, fully. Wow. And I think that the, that's why the Bible talks so much about we need to be humble and that God honors those who are humble and those who are pride will fall yeah. because pride kills us while humility um, propels us towards ourselves, one another and towards God. So I think as you seek out God and, and set your heart on humility, it will activate you wow. to be more intentional. Great. Coming to like our last question. Hmm. Again, this is a journey that I'm on. I'm constantly mm-hmm. on a journey, which is good because that means you're growing. That's right. Yes. The discipleship is the, the slowest journey and yes. the longest journey of your life. Exactly. Because it never ends. <laughs> yeah. Um, how would you create boundaries when it comes to discipling someone? I mean, <laughs> again, yeah, it's, when, it's I, when I question. staff DTS, yeah. it's a lot. So I'm yeah. like, I was like, I had to learn how to create boundaries yeah. where I'm still present yeah. and, you know, communicating with you know the trainees that I'm like I'm still there for you but I need to have that boundaries so how from your experience what does that look like Uh, it's the most commonly asked questions like when we do training courses for DTS staff and leaders and it's a very common question it's like boundaries and how do you stay friend versus leader and friend versus discipler and stuff like that but I also think it's just in life like people just you know, like people read books on boundaries and find out the boundaries. Like a common, a really popular book now, now in, in, y, in not just in YWAM, but in Christian circles, is The Ruthless Elimination of Hur- Hurry by John Mark Comer. Yeah, Colin, something like that. Yeah, and that's about boundaries. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's, um, what do you say? I'm not, a pro- I'm not a professional on boundaries. But what my perception will be over the years is that I, I, I feel boundaries are closely knitted with your maturity yeah. and, and your ability to love yourself appropriately. Because I think if you are immature within yourself and you don't love yourself, you will either put too many boundaries wow, yes. or you will not put enough boundaries, depending on what your fight or flight response is. Right. Like, you know, do you push away people or do you try to people please? Um, so in a, in a broader sense, it just, I think it's a, it's a good, that's why DTS staffing is great because you realize how immature you are. Yes. It's a wonderful yeah, journey. so much. <laughs> um, uh, and I mean, in the, again, the biggest sense, intimacy with Jesus, because if you get to know him, you get to know yourself, you create better boundaries. But then I think it's just being okay by not finding the direct answer. Yeah. And, as, and your attitude needs to be from a sacrificial attitude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, then, and there's always someone who sacrifices uh, too much, uh, but th- that's what relationships are: is to sacrifice. And there's definitely a you giving too much, yes, yeah. where it's yeah. not helpful. So th- th- it's definitely. But yeah. I'm I'm always careful by giving a a direct answer in the middle because I've I've seen when that's been done and it's always misinterpreted. And I right. think it's interpreted from a person's internal maturity. Right. And I think I guess that's with with everything. But I think you just what well, the the key to succeed I think is to constantly ask the question. Yeah. And have peers in your life like, am I doing too much? Am I doing too little? Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. Asking questions is key. Yeah. Very wow. That's good. Just to finish just mm-hmm. w- um, with something that also for me, um, that sometimes I get into it. Mm-hmm. Jesus gives us the Great Commission, yep. which he says, um, go and make disciples mm. of all nations. Come on. Yes. It's great. But as also as, as Christians, mm-hmm how that this command looks for us just like as a normal christian you mean like in everyday life what yeah, it means to fulfill the great co- yeah. commitment uh, it's to be having jesus as not just your savior but your lord uh, and if i would say anything that defines that i can tell the difference when someone has given themselves like if someone has not made jesus lord in their life that will make it or break them because that right. means that something else is Lord. And when that thing comes up against you choosing God or you choosing it, you will choose it. Mm-hmm. So I think as a general Christian, you should always move towards that complete surrender to Jesus. And then uh, educate yourself, knowing the Bible. Now, I mean, mm-hmm. spheres of society, like you don't have to be a missionary. And this is mm-hmm. common knowledge nowadays, yeah. but like you don't need to be a missionary or a pastor. You can be anything like you can be a businessman and earn tons of money 
Like you can be a, a teacher or an engineer or yeah. working with science, studying evolution. You can, you know, all these things yeah. and you still, it's just who, what is the main voice you're listening to and how are you strengthening your intimacy? And I think as, as long as each individual Christian is strengthening their intimacy with Jesus, Come on. I, I say daily, but that doesn't necessarily mean quiet time daily, but it's it's intentional with their relationship with God. I, mm. I think it will be a natural outcome mm. eventually. Wow. Yeah. Woo! It's good. <laughs> so you. good. Thank you so much, Yuan. Mm -hmm. I, for me, this, mm. oh, you've helped me so much in my journey walking with God. Honestly, That's good. since I've come to this base and you are... I mean, we've had it here. <laughs> you yeah. see how, you know, he's so intentional with with Jesus, how you're so intentional with him and intentional with people. Mm -hmm. And not just, you know, like we're friends and you've been so intentional with me even when I was dis, um, staffing the DTS. Mm -hmm. But I see you being so intentional with trainees and mm -hmm. and, and you, you are a really good listener. And, and I was like, God, I want this. And I go back to what you said, be intentional, That's go great. deep, Zio. So thank you so much. Every time... I have a conversation with you and I'm always leave. I'm like, oh, more things. Yes, this is so good. <laughs> I'm great. growing. That's lovely. That's <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me. It's always wonderful and fun to talk about uh, discipleship. So, so good. Yeah, let's do it again. Yes. Thank you. Has been just a great topic, uh, discipleship. I think we can speak this for hours and hours. Yes. And it's let's. So, so let's. Come <laughs> on. So great. And yeah, it has been impactful, but it's also something to process. It, oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always yeah. processing it. So It's always it's a journey. Been, yes. It's, a great, great. it's a journey. And yeah, thank you. Thank you guys as well that have been watching us. If uh, you like it, there is more coming up. Don't forget to watch it on our Facebook page, YouTube, and podcast as well. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.